Hello, boys and girls. My name's Chris, and I'd like to read you an extract from my book, Heaven and Friends Meet an Ancient King. All three of them were running through the trees, jumping over tree trunks that had given up and fallen to the ground, climbing up the small inclines and around the places where the ground had decided to dip down. The trees were getting thicker and thicker, and Evan realised he'd never been this far in the woods before. Maybe they were getting closer to where the witches might be hiding, he thought. Then suddenly he saw something that made him stop in his tracks. Violet, who was just behind him, caught up and stopped too, and before long Grayson joined them. Do you think, began Grayson, when he'd caught his breath, do you think that maybe that's where a witch lives? The children were looking at an old house, bigger than a cottage, and older than any of the houses in Lantwit. The trees around it had wrapped their branches into the walls, and leaves covered the roof. The shutters on the windows were all closed, and the front door was dark and even from where they were standing, the children could see it was covered in dust. In short, it didn't look like anybody had been living there for a long, long, long time. Evan took a step towards it. What are you doing? asked Violet. I want to see who lives there, replied Evan. But what if it's a witch? Isn't that what we're looking for? asked Grayson, who followed Evan towards the house. Violet said nothing for a moment, and then she sighed. I guess, but be careful. I'm always careful, said Evan. He reached the front door and knocked. The children waited, each holding their breath. But there was no reply. Evan went to the window and tried to open the shutter to see if he could look through the glass. But the shutter wouldn't open. There was so much ivy covering it. He went back to the front door and knocked again. Once again, his knock was unanswered. He took hold of the old wooden door handle and tried to push it open, but it was without luck. I'm not sure we can just go inside somebody else's house, Violet murmured. Isn't that what burglars do? I don't think this house belongs to anyone, said Evan. Look around, there's no garden, no fence. The window shutters won't open. It doesn't look like anybody's been here in years and years. He tried to push the open door again, but it wouldn't budge. Then he remembered. The key that he'd found yesterday, it looked old. As old as this house may be. It didn't seem to make sense, and yet Evan had a feeling that he couldn't explain. A feeling that told him that he had to try the key. So he took it out of his pocket and put it into the lock. Slowly, he turned it and felt the lock give way. He twisted once more, and the door, stiff and old though it was, opened. My goodness, gasped Violet. Crikey, explained Grayson. Wow, whispered Evan. Evan stepped inside. It was dark. Darker than the woods and even darker than night he had arrived in Lantwit with his parents. Then there'd been the moon and the lights from the car and Great Nana's old house. The window was covered in ivy. But now, inside this old abandoned house, there was nothing. But Evan continued inside. From the little light that shone through the front door, Emma could see the room before him. It was the front room of a house, simple but large. The floor was wooden and covered in dust, as was the rest of the room. The walls were made of stone and were bare. Nothing had been hung up to make the place look cheery. But instead, 
there was the air of ghostliness. Ghostliness and dust. There was a large table in the middle of the room with a couple of brass candlesticks. Some chairs were dotted around the table. Other than that, the room was empty. Then, Evan heard a noise. Did you hear that? he said to Grayson and Violet, both of whom stood by the doorway, wary of stepping inside. No, they shook their heads. But then Evan heard it again. A low, weak groan. It's coming from the back of the house, Evan whispered. And he began to follow the noise, stepping further and further into the darkness. He reached the dark hallway and glanced back at the light where his friend stood. Evan, whispered Violet, come back. Somebody might be hurt, Evan murmured. Or maybe it's a fox or a cat or a dog. We can't leave an animal in pain. What if it's a witch? suggested Grayson. Heaven sighed. Dad said there's no such thing as witches. But earlier we said that was just a game, interrupted Evan. This is real life. He took another step into the darkness, using his hands to feel his way forward. After a few more steps, he began to see his hands before him, and he realised that whatever room he was stepping into, there was some kind of light inside, shining through a doorway, that he was beginning to be able to make out in the darkness. He reached the end of the hallway and pushed the half door further open. The room he stepped into was a kitchen. But it wasn't like any kitchen had ever seen. There was no fridge, no oven, no hob. In fact, there was nothing electric in sight. Neither, Evan then noticed, was there a sink. Instead, a large wooden table sat in the middle of the room, covered with herbs and plants. On one wall was a great fireplace, with a far roaring and lighting up the room. It was this light he'd seen in the hallway. Around the fire was a metal stand from which hung a black pot. A cauldron, thought Evan. This is a witch's house. 